Bam. We're live. Bruce Wayne, Heidi, Elaine, Badejo, Adam Blake, Slee, Corey Leonard, Michelle Shanks. I know Michael Shank. Elise Carr Redow, Kenneth Delap, Eric Weiss, Jason Estel, Mr. Rod, and Heidi Kroom, Keller Moore, Jenny Sock, Lucky Camera Straps, Elisa Schultz, Alex Mallard, Quack, Victor Brown. That's a great name. You got to be Mexican, are you? Let me see. Victor Brown. Okay, this guy's name is Victor, and he's Victor, and he's Brown. Victor S. A. Brown. That's what I'm guessing what his middle name is. S. A. Brian G. Sevi. What's good, my brother? Wow, you talk to me like you know me. That's crazy. That, like, that, 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 that. Uh oh. Uh oh. I am in big fucking trouble. Big trouble. Yes, Victor. Victor. Seven. What's Seven. up, Essay? Seven. What's up, pal? What's up, Essay? <laughs> Listen, I have to get to clear it up right now. Yeah, tell me. There's no Mexican. Oh, it's definitely Sicilian, Mexican. Man. Sicilian. Yeah. Ah, no wonder. Nobody gives a fuck about being called anything except in a Sicilian. I love it. Good. Good. <laughs> I had to call in. I've listened to you forever. I think you're doing a phenomenal job. I, I, I used to listen to you when you were on your CrossFit, when you ran the CrossFit podcast. And you know what? I never liked you. I was like, this guy always interrupts everybody. I swear to God, who is this? What guy? are you talking about? What are you one, talking about interrupting you, people? Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> but I was like, you know what? Now I listen to you, and I'm like, this guy is on point, you know? And I agree with a lot of stuff, but there's some <laughs> things, you know, we go to head to head. Hey, when you're as smart as me and you, it's hard not to interrupt people. <laughs> um, and I would never Listen. apologize to anyone except a Sicilian. I, I, I apologize. Respect. Don't send the, anyone out to get me. You're the best. You're the best. All right, brother. Thanks All right. For calling. I'm listening to the show. All Take right. Take it easy. Bye. I'm going to be on my best behavior tomorrow when Adrian, Adrian comes on too. Where the fuck is O'Keefe? Uh... Do you guys want me to hop on for my car? If I get on in five, I will pull in my house. Hey, sure. Yeah. Wait, sure. Yeah. We do. Sure. Come in whenever you want. Come whenever you want. That's what my wife tells me. Seems fair. What comes around goes around. Do to others as you would want them to. I don't know how that one goes. Uh, you know, so here's what I was thinking. I don't know if this is true. So take this with a huge grain of salt. I'm totally open to get, uh, you know, slapped around if this is not true. Um, if, uh, good evening, soccer mom. Uh, those are special people. The Sicilians are, oh, the wrench people. Man, I'm going to go in and take everyone's wrenches away. Um, when I, when I, one day I just went onto YouTube. So I don't watch this show on YouTube. I watch this on some software called StreamYard. And one day I went over, I'm like, man, we need some people like slapping people around in here. I think it was mostly taking out like the spam. So I just went over to YouTube and anyone I recognized like from the show, like on the regular, like someone like Heidi or Bruce Wayne, I just made them a wrench. Oh, you want a wrench? Oh, you have a wrench. Okay, cool. Yeah. Like anyone could get a wrench. You can get a wrench. They're just for beating people. MLK, you probably need a wrench. But but I don't like to go over there to YouTube. I was on uh, Eddie If's podcast the other day, and he told me his software doesn't work if you have too many tabs open. I think my software works great, and I have like 100 tabs open. We have uh, Matt O'Keefe coming. Uh, Matt O'Keefe was, is, was uh, uh, like the man over at uh, Wadapalooza. Um, he it was... Uh, uh, Matt Fraser's man. He was Katrin David's daughter's man. Uh, sounds like he picked up Ellie Turner. Uh, maybe she's just a double agent in the Justin Medeiros camp. Um, I and he. I think he has Brooke Wells. He may even have Tia. 
Does he have Tia? I was trying to remember. It sounds like he might even represent Tia. He's the man. And he does all that. And he stepped away from his job at running Wadapalooza and whatever. He had some like super title with a company called Loud and Live that owns Wadapalooza. And uh, Matt O'Keefe um, now is, I think, the CEO of NWA. HWP. H, hard work pays off. HWPO. So he's over there at Matt, Matt Matt's joint. We're continuing to work with the greatest CrossFitter who ever lived. Savon, what are you saying? He's the greatest CrossFitter who ever lived. Well, there's, you know, what do you know? Pick one. There's three or four. There's three. You pick one. You can, it's like, it's like, I've said this before. It's like I'm going to school at UC Santa Barbara and you're like, that's the hottest chick ever. And someone's like, you said that yesterday. I was like, yeah, there's like a hundred of them. I don't know. Can't, I can't. I don't make the rules. Just follow them. I'm gonna, I got, I got a, uh, I showered right before I worked out and showered before this. So I think I got a couple of good questions. That's where my good questions come. Fine, fine, fine. I don't think O'Keefe works with Rich though. So, but I hear you. I ain't hating. Yeah, fine. Rich is the greatest ever. Fine. I think if, the, I think after Tia wins this year, it's going to be really hard to like, even, even with my love for Rich, it's going to be hard to like keep him at the top. Man. Man, he, he's going to have to win like three Masters, four Masters. Wrench is – and Durable is better than Wrench. Yeah, you're probably right. You're probably right. Or is it that all the people who have wrenches are on and Durable? Yeah, Dick. Yeah. Um, I was going to tell a story. I got sidetracked. I sidetracked myself. Can you sidetrack yourself? Can I be saying something and then say I got sidetracked, but it, but I was the only person on the show? Can I sidetrack myself? Have you ever sidetracked yourself, Mr. O'Keefe? I don't know. That's a tough question to answer. I didn't know I was supposed to put my uh, my handle in there. Is that that's how you get followers? Yeah, here I'll do it for you. I got some fancy tools <laughs> back here. What 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 is your your? I don't know. Am I, am I supposed to know that? I think it's O K K E R Ochre. Ochre. It's I don't know what it is. O K E F M R maybe. Give me. I'm gonna double check. Hey, you know I had mine taken away. Really? And then reinstated. So wait, wait. Tell me. So is that <clears throat> that one? Your that's there was gone and now back. No, that no. So <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you the story. It's 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 uh you, you'll like it as a, as a uh. You'll, every agent should know this. <laughs> should I every, turn it sideways so that I get like? Ooh. There we hey, go. you're somewhere fancy. Is that your house? This is my house. Yeah. yeah <clears> nice. I'm in my wife's office. Yeah, it's nice. I can tell. It's like it's someone who's like smart and uh, she has is. shit to do. She's very smart. So nice. I have this. Inst I have this Instagram account, and it has a blue check mark from when I was working over at CrossFit Inc. And uh, it had 90,000 followers. And I posted a lot of stuff on there, especially in my story about uh, the injection, about vaccines and things like that. A ton of stuff in there. Yeah. And, that, and that's like a no-no. You're not allowed to talk about that on um, social media, right? Un unless you're towing the line. You, you, if you tow the line, you can talk about it. If you don't, if you, qu you, can't even, you can't even question or else you get like, you could get a ding. And then... Interestingly enough, Mr. O'Keefe, there was someone who was going through my Instagram account about a year ago and looking at all the pictures of my boys. Really? And reporting me for uh, child pornography because it was boys with, um, working out with their shirts off, which I find fascinating because, as you know, many of your clients do more risque stuff than me. But we'll leave Matt out of this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I have a, I have that a hairy man. Those yeah. hairs should not. He has pubes everywhere and he shows them. I know, right? In the, uh, I, I, I never that, showed a fucking pube. I have a friend that happened to, uh, would show his kids running around the house in their diapers and got his account frozen. Yeah. And mine are dudes. It's the fucking, anyway. So for whatever that's worth, in our society, dudes, shirtless dudes are okay and shirtless girls are not okay. I don't make the rules. I just, Anyway, so so I, my account was always a little volatile, right? And I suspected. And one day I woke up and it said, hey, your shit's gone. Like, fuck you from, from Instagram. And so then I applied to have it come back. And you know those things when you go to help centers and you try to do something and it just keeps going to a dead end? Like you fill out all the paperwork and you're saying it's like, sorry, um, you've tried too many times. And you're like, but that's the first time I've tried. 
And then you try again and like, sorry, you can't try for 45 minutes. It was like that kind of shit. Like it was never meant to get my message. Yeah. I, I, I challenge anybody to find someone to, to help you uh, behind the Instagram wall. There's no, there's no, there's no answers that ever come there. So then I did everything in my power as the media mogul that I am. And I was, uh, it was late, late, was it last night or two nights ago? And it popped back up. Really? Uh, yes. Oh, re recently. Yes. And an acquaint and the only reason why I want this account is because that blue check mark. Because that blue check, if I DM you, Oki, for my other account, you're like, fuck this guy. But if you see the blue check mark, you're like, oh yeah. At least if they, that's how I operate. That actually, when you comment too, you're always brought to the top of the comments with a blue check mark that that is one advantage if you want to be heard that's one way to be heard so then i uh oh uh, well, in, uh, here's another secret uh matt Souza taught me subscribe to people's accounts and like ask for uh, notifications from their accounts and the second you get a notification like do that if you, if you want to put on followers go to matt fraser's account click on all the notifications for when he goes live when he gets everything it, when he posts everything and the second he posts be the first person to post at the top and say something clever and you'll stay up there because oh, people will start liking it even if you don't say something clever if you're the first post most people will you can start getting a lot of likes and it's a great tactic Souza uses it we have competitions like who can get the most likes he'll be like look i have thirteen thousand likes and i'll be like what the fuck you know from a comment you know what i mean that's amazing <clears throat> there you go so then someone contacts me who works at instagram who'd contacted me before and told me hey someone's out to get you um a group of people are, are going through going through your account and po posting a bunch of sh or or reporting stuff that shouldn't be reported anyway that happened again recently and this time the person told me that the people who were reporting me now they've started a file on them and if they keep doing false reports they get tossed i was like justice i don't know if i believe it but i like it so i'm abandoning my account my blue check mark account i am no longer going to post to my story or my feed i have someone else who's going to do that for me Who's not as contentious as me, like a like, you know, like like a whole. She's like a mom, right? She's like a mom that does CrossFit and shit. She got like five kids, and she's gonna do all my posting, and then I'm gonna go over on my other account that I started, my Sevon Rinsta account. This one, and I'm being an asshole. That way, with that blue check mark account, I can be like, oh, dear Mister O'Keefe, I have a podcast. Would you like come, to come on and you see the blue check mark? And oh, uh, there you go. Good for you. There you go. Smart. I like this. Thank you. How you been? I'm awesome. Yeah. I got my account back. Did I tell you? <laughs> There's three huge examples of athletes who have successfully managed their fame. And by successfully managed, I'm just going to define it as they're super famous in our community, in our community. There's mm -hmm. no one famous in our community, but super famous in our community and, um, and, and rich. And that didn't stop them from continuing to be the best. Matt Tia Rich. Have you ever seen it go the other way? Ha and, and no, no names, but just as like a PSA, have you seen, have you actually seen someone who got a little bit of fame and their own Instagram account took them down? Meaning like, Oh, for sure. Oh, I'm sorry. Are we doing a podcast? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they, is it have you it, seen it? It is yeah, for sure. It, it's um, man. I mean, what are the pitfalls, Mister O'Keefe? What are the pitfalls? Social media is a wonderful tool, but it's a trap. Those those guys can't. like time suck at it, its most fundamental. Yeah, I've, I mean, it's interesting. I, I don't know if anybody's ever gone through the exercise of looking at what your screen time and and you know per app and all that. I mean, it's you know make you vomit. You know, sometimes when you look at that, you, you can get caught up in it. And of course, we, you know, I've gone through ebbs and flows with, you know, any athlete we've worked with over time where, you know, social was, you know, playing too important a role in, in, a, in their day to day lives. Um, but, mo you know, mo most of them that, you know, I would say all of them that I work with now have it in the right place. Um, did I lose you? Oh, there you are. Sorry. I hit the people are texting me. Um, but yeah, it's, um, 
I mean, come on, you know, you, you, you've seen it. I mean, I have my average daily use down to under seven hours. I mean, don't, don't look at me. (laughs) You're crushing it there. There, the, um, I would never use my Instagram if I didn't think I could make, if it didn't give me what I wanted. I've never masturbated to Instagram. I don't go there to, um, I never go there to, I've never looked at it and been like, Hey, I wish I could have that. Or I wish I could do that. I just, maybe it's cause I'm old. I just go on there and I'm like, Oh fuck. Who's this guy? This guy, Matt O'Keefe's the agent for Matt Fraser. I want to get Matt Fraser, but I can't get him. So first I'll get O'Keefe. I'll impress him. And then Matt will maybe do a show with me. There you go. Like it's to, it's to get what I want. Yeah, right. It's, it, I mean, everybody has their reason. I mean, so many of them, it's, it's a, it's the, you know, it's their business really, you know? Yeah. It's that's what I mean. Of, and I think it's great for that. Yeah. It, it, it really, it really is. I mean, it's so funny. Like I, I, you know, I remember the day I, you know, funny Matt sat in, in my living room here and we're begging him to open an Instagram account and he didn't want to do it because he wanted nothing to do with social media. Um, you know, and, perfectly healthy, perfectly normal. Yeah. I mean, he just like, you know, he was so, you know, so simple then he is still now, honestly, like he just, you know, he's very black and white with that. But at the time he just it was like, listen, I, I have no interest. I'm, I'm going to go and compete and win money that way. Um, you know, here, you know, whatever, nine years later, things have changed drastically, but um, I, you know, he still I've keeps seen, his Instagram very simple. Yeah. He still and, keeps it very like, here's me and Sammy, Drinking a cup of coffee. I mean, it's it's chill. He's, he's done a really good job with that and putting it in the right place. There are times where it just, you know, it frustrated him mostly, you know, like just being too, you know, either important or, you know, having too much of a role in his day to day. But it's in a great place. I mean, he um, his social is awesome. You know, I, I uh, it's him, you know, like I, I can honestly like knowing him better than anyone it's pretty, it's really authentic, you know, and th- that's like, I mean, you can get into this, like, you know, you know business talk on, in, you know, social, but, um, you know, I think there's comfort in that too for, and, you know, I'm very fortunate. Everybody we work with does now a really good job, you know, with that, you know, where it's just, you know, Hey, like, let it flow. If you've got nothing to po- talk about, don't post, you know, used to be, you know, when I first started, it was about, you know, got to put something up every day. That's not the formula. Um, but yeah, I mean, maybe the formula should be Matt. You should do something every day. That's exciting enough to be, you could argue those guys do, you know, right. um, Right. You know, if I follow somebody, you know, because I'm interested in this sport, you know, I want to see them, you know, doing things related to the sport, you know, that's, you know, a lot of their engagement and then they develop other things that people engage them for like Matt, you know, you know, rides motorcycles and travels a lot. And, you know, he just like, you know, that's an example there of, you know, with his social, but yeah, I mean, those guys, they're all kind of in a good groove now, but man, that is the, the ride, the social ride for the last eight, nine years is wild. I mean, you know, you've seen it, you saw it with CrossFit. I mean, it's, um, and we live in a, it's funny, like, you know, when I, talk to others in other sports or, you know, you know, or talk to brands coming in from outside, you know, everybody is really intrigued with the level of engagement that athletes in our space get, um, you know, pertaining to just CrossFit, CrossFit games related stuff. Um, it's re- it, it, you know, it, it's, it over, it over trends, um, on engagement. It's really interesting. And I think that they, do I think, really the, I think the term you're talking about too is conversion, right? Yeah, I transactionally, mean, conversion is you know engagement conversion. Um, you know, it's you know I'm mostly talking about engagement. I mean, it's just you know you see. I mean, look at any of their socials; they're really interesting. Look at a brand post opposed to something with them, you know, doing a workout or you know um, something lifestyle related. It's insane. Uh, they get huge, huge engagement. So. Yes. My mom was accusing me of putting words in people's mouth, and I just tried to put words in your mouth, and you're like, "No, no, I mean engagement, Sebi." <laughs> See, mom, people can stand up for themselves. Keith gently slapped me down, said, "Sit down, sit, sit, sit." sit. Uh, here's what I meant by conversion: when when CrossFit um it, when CrossFit was exploding, and when it had a Facebook and Instagram account, when I was there during 
couple times we had one. Uh, the the uh, William Morris Endeavor was like, holy fuck, we cannot, we've never seen a brand. There were people who had massive engagement, people like, or sorry, conversion. There were people who had massive conversion like The Rock and a few others. Um, yeah. But but CrossFit as a brand had the craziest conversion. And by that, um, you probably know what it means, but just to define it, meaning that the, the number of people who were on your account who then let's say you put up a t-shirt for sale who bought it was fucking crazy like it was like I, i'm just making this up i can't remember but it was like three and a half percent versus uh, uh a good was considered a quarter of one percent and so you see um katrin david's daughter putting on a pair of uh, uh wrist straps and all of a sudden five percent of her followers buy it it's like holy fuck that's a powerful human being that's an influencer it is, it is, it is crazy. Well, and, and, and because she's in functional, sorry, sorry, because she's in, or as Dave says, I'm not sorry. Uh, uh, she's in the functional fitness space. Right. And so people like everything she's doing is real. That's the thing that I think people don't realize, um, you, you know, and having the opportunity to, well, I'm a big sports fan in general, but work in some other sports is that it's a, it's a sport that a lot of people watch and also do. Right. So it's, it's, um, you know, golf's a great analogy I've made many times, but, you know, people, you know, watch golf, um, you know, engage their stars that they love and then buy all the tools that those guys use and promote. Um, it's similar here, you know, it's, it's um, you know, people see what happens at region semifinals of the games or whatever, and then they go to the gym and re repeat the workouts or they see them wear something. And, you know, the shoes, the, the CrossFit game shoes that Noble launched are a perfect example. I mean, they sold out, you know, uh, people want to wear the stuff that the, the, the stars are, are, are wearing on the floor. So yeah. I want a Stairmaster so bad. And I fucking text Matt the other day and said, Hey, what's a Stairmaster? And he said, he basically wrote back to me, ha ha ha. You're making fun of me. And it's, I wasn't. And eventually I got him to tell me which one he had. And it's like, I've been, I've been obsessed with a Stairmaster and I only want it for one reason. Cause Matt it's, has it. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's, it's the that, truth. It's the truth. I bought wrist wraps when I saw Miko Salo had them. I never have worn them once. I still have them there in my garage. That thing, that thing's funny. First of all, it, people can look at that and, and roll their eyes. Go ahead and hit that thing and tell me how you feel after that is devastating. That machine. And he doesn't he, waste time. He's not going to waste his time. He put that on a, on a, a YouTube um, episode, and I mean, we heard from the brand and everything. Like they were like, "Oh my god, what's going on?" You know, um, you know, who, they they were sort of distant from it. They're like, you know, who, who is this guy? Um, yeah, LeBron doesn't really drink Sprite, but he has I don't know two hundred million followers or whatever he has, so he only needs to convert a quarter of one percent, right? Yeah. But, but is that as powerful as Matt gets on a fucking Stairmaster and they're seven thousand dollars a pop and he sells twenty and they normally only sell twenty every six months? Now they're like, "What the fuck?" It is right? interesting. It's like the lar large numbers. I mean, he, you know, LeBron has such a insane following that you know every you know tenth of a point is you know in, you know so much more than anybody with, you know, whatever, you know, 5% of the fall. Obviously it's just math, but he, uh, the, the rate at which, you know, that, that transaction that you're talking about is insane with our group. And, um, and his, and his is disingenuous. So he's using, um, his brand. He's using the, he's burning the LeBron band brand equity for to intelligent people. Like I trust him less now. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's but with Matt, he increases his brand equity. Or David Katrin's daughter, in, in, or Katrin Davis' daughter, increases her brand equity when I see her using those headphones, or when I see him with the stairmaster. Because I'm like, oh shit! Like then I get the headphones, or I get the stairmaster, and I'm fitter, or I'm, or I, they, they st actually stay in my ear. It's awesome too because when you look at you know Cat or Tia or Matt, like these guys now get to be more selective which means more authentic it's it's like you know that's where it's a perfect storm you know things get really good those guys have been very selective from the beginning they they, they all three of those examples possess a ton of patience um and you know it it works really well like you, i can honestly say anything in matt's arsenal is, is our things he uses and, and believes in so it's um he drinks the podium he, he does yeah who does he, yeah. does he OD? Who, what did you say? Who doesn't? 
Who doesn't? He, Who it's doesn't? Great. <laughs> you gotta we'll have to get you some. Does he OD on the podium? You ever seen him OD? Kind of like start twitching and shit. No, I mean it's like, but podiums pre is literally put together what he thought would be like the perfect formula for pre workout, right? Like he just like all these things that he learned through you know his career he got to kind of like formulate through that but that that um hey maybe that's a good marketing strategy hey this is the recommended dose it's what matt took don't do it (laughs) fuck that i'm doing that that that's the uh you know people toss around the whole authentic thing all the time right it's like but authentic you know i'm seeing you know people be patient to be authentic which is hard now it's harder now right the sport is real and like you know not that it wasn't before but it's become you know more and more mainstream so elite uh it's a razor thin edge to you know to to even achieve the crossfit games now so there is the same scenario that's playing out on the sponsorship side you know that those that have been around a long time you can't just like show up and go to the games and all you know everything's great overnight you know it's it's different that was the case eight nine years ago you showed some you know, you, you did well at the games once and it was like, okay, you know, it was such a startup space that brands engaged it, you know, so it's, it's different. Um, so being authentic is obviously really important. It's harder for an athlete to say like, I'm only going to wear this clothing brand and wait to be sponsored by them because that's the one I believe in. It's harder, you know, it's, it's, um, they, you know, and they, they formulate partnerships and believe in the people that, you know, they, they work with, but, um, you know, whatever seven eight years ago it was a little easier to be picky um this this a uh, guy who who wants to who has been helping me with the podcast just decided he wants to help me um came over to my house and started filming like he filmed me do some workouts and d- doesn't even tell me when he's coming over and it and he just watches the podcast he lives in the area and then he sees stuff like i, I was m- making fun of olivia kerstetter and he said well can you beat her time you know who that is the 16 year old girl 17 year old girl is that works out with J- Jacob yeah. Hepner? Yeah, 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 yeah. She's she's phenomenal. Yeah, you, you should get her. You guys should get her. She she's uh, she's impressive. Get her, Matt. Get her. <laughs> get her. Get her. Uh, um. So he comes over and he's like, "Hey, you should do the workout she did." Since you talked all that shit, and it's um and and the whole video I, I first like for the first twenty seconds I'm like, "Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna beat her," and I'm like, "Dude, you better fucking chill out and just be yourself because this video is gonna be about you eating shit." And I did how'd, eat shit. How'd that go? How'd that go? For fucking it? horrible. I ch- couldn't. She snatched 125, 100 or 50 times. And the first time I attempted it, I fucking failed. I'm like, oh, fuck. I'm, this is, this is a, this is a, this is a disaster. And that, but people loved the video because it was authentic. You're right. But the whole time I'm scared to death. I saw like, you, I saw you doing, um, you and Brian had some, yeah, so then Brian thinks it's cute to beat up on me and puts out this, <laughs> puts out something on Instagram, and this guy sees it. This local filmmaker once again just shows up to my house. He's like, calls me. I'm like, where are you? He's on my out front. I'm like, oh fuck, here we go. <laughs> Time to black out in the garage. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right, authentic. Yeah, that's it's tight. I mean, it's it, you know people use that loosely, but how about the, the how about the Odine on the thirst picks too? I thought it was look at someone like Danielle Brandon. She she doesn't do a lot of thirst picks, and then she does that one where she's like in front of the statue in her bathing suit. Don't act like you didn't see it, O'Keefe. Don't I, I, I swear, don't act like you didn't see I it. I see you trying to hold kids, a straight face. I swear on my kids, I did not see that. Okay, fine. Yeah. Uh, it was it was about a month ago, and it was just like yeah, she just her other shit's just like her like walking around on her couch in a pair of shorts and a shirt that's too big, opening the blinds, and then like that's all you get. But then, you know, once a month you see her in a bathing suit and everyone fucking loses their shit. I think it's a better tactic. D- DV's cool. Yeah, I, you know, I've got to spend a little time with her over the last year. Um, super, super cool kid. And I think she does a really good job with her social overall. Like she, that's really her. You know, she's a uh, human tornado. She's awesome. I, I like her a lot. Human tornado. No, human tornado. What do you mean? <laughs> um uh fire she's fire oh okay I, I, she's I, fire I got like that. things can accidentally burn down around her no not that like she is yeah i agree for she's sure. fire no shit can just burn down she's like a magnifying glass if you set it in the wrong spot and the sun hits it something's burning down dv's cool people 
I agree. I agree. One of my favorites. Love her. I, and I think she's authentic. I think she really is a magnifying glass. It, I mean, who can walk up and flip off the entire fucking crowd in this wholesome sport of CrossFit and smile? And everyone's like, yay, she flipped us off. <laughs> <laughs> it's because it's her, I forgot, right? I forgot about that last year when they had her secluded in lane 10 by herself with two lanes between her. And and I bet you her conversion's in, insane. You know, she only has 400,000, but I bet you there's a ton of people in the space who have significantly more than her double, but they don't get the conversion she gets. I'm sure. I'm sure I don't work with her, but um, I'm friends with her agent. She She's... Uh, do you she, own toe spacers? Uh, do I own toe spacers? No. Oh. But, she, oh, do, she I, didn't... Do, do I have a set of toe spacers? Yes. I actually do. Converted. Do. Yes. Yes, I do. And I will admit it was because she posted for sure. Yes. You're a good dude. I'll try it out. Yeah. See, no one's immune. No one's immune. No. That's a, yeah, I, I, I feel, you know what, that's, it's interesting. I, I, I say this often, I feel like what, you know, has made me good at, you know, helping brands or, you know, individual athlete brands, people we work with is I'm such a prototypical consumer because I, I you know, I fall in the trap all the time. You know, I get, you know, something, something gets targeted at me and I'm in the tunnel feeling, filling the thing out, you know, going, I, I, honestly, it's, I, I recognize it. I'm not mad about it. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, um, I feel like there are a lot of me out there. We live in a beautiful time with a lot of beautiful objects and it gets poo pooed as superficialness, but it doesn't have to be. No. But, but we're really lucky with the objects we have, you know? Yeah. They, it's, I mean, it, when you, when our parents didn't even have glass bongs. I mean, I don't use a bong anymore, but, but, but our parents didn't even have glass bongs, probably. I mean, man, you, I was the, I was the only one in, for the most part, of my friend group. But, but when I was in college, first of all, cell phone, I was one of the few that had one. B, we were one of the first universities to have email, maybe the first. I went to, to BC and uh, we had, I had email for four years and didn't check it once. And I remember, I remember leaving my senior year being like, oh, let me see what's in here. I'm like, shit, I got messages from like three years ago. I mean, email wasn't even a thing. That was in the late 90s, you know? Uh, why did you who why did you have a cell phone? I don't yeah, I don't I don't remember. Like my Were think, you dealing? Be honest. Were you <laughs> no, I wasn't. My parents I had a car. I think my parents gave it to me because I'd be driving around. I, you know, it was like, you know, the parent thing. Like, you know, what, Do you no, remember what model you had? It was like a it was like it was a Qualcomm. It was it was a you know, it wasn't a flip, it was just like it was like a smaller like handheld phone. Qualcomm uh had like phone. and you like it had like a scroll on the right side oh of it. yes wow okay stand by stand by wow I do remember this I do remember this phone <clears throat> this is yeah good job dude I can't believe you remember this I remember that big old <laughs> fucking media it. thing it's this thing right yes <laughs> that's wow amazing. wow those things still work I, do you remember this thing? Oh yeah, my dad had one of those. And the cord, the cord that was on that thing was like the old cord, like like this kind of cord. It's amazing when that thing. When I first saw that thing, I was like, that was like the cool, like that was the coolest thing ever. You know, a phone in your car that looked like that. Was, <laughs> that thing is bananas. Look at that. I I was in um, New York City. God, I'm trying to think which rapper I saw, but he had like a, it was way back then I was young and he had this massive satellite on the roof of his Jeep. Some God, who was it? Someone we all know, but anyway, and it was for, it was for like a cell phone that he had that was like huge. That's but, and he also, and he also had like a fucking giant satellite. I mean, that's still what sat phones look like now, right? Like those things. <laughs> What, yeah. what, what's it, so what's the deal with you? You're not coming, you're not coming out to Madison. No, no, you're just going to stay there. And do it's how thing? it's, it's kind of, if I, if I thought it would make me money, I would come out there. It's kind of like how I view Instagram. Like if I thought like it was good for, um, what I'm doing, um, 
in, in terms of the podcast, I would come out there. I just don't, I think I'm most, I'll be most effective right here. Um, I'll have a, I'll have a half dozen people on the ground there, maybe more. And uh, with the cell phone technology we have today, holy shit, I can cover everything. Uh, we got a booth there through um, Paper Street Coffee. And oh, cool. yeah, it's going to be uh, Sunday is going to be Sunday where if you are wearing a seven podcast shirt and you take a picture at the CrossFit Games um, and uh, we're going to give away a rogue echo bike. And oh, I, have a fe- I have a feeling we get, we're going to have uh, it's going to be quite quite the scene. So I'm, I'm pretty. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty tickled about it. I feel like this is like mischievous. Like when I was in the eighth grade and I would take the playboy from at the library and then open it up to the centerfold and leave it on the librarians, like, you know, desk and then run away. And then we'd all hide and watch when she came to her desk. And so I feel like that's what it's like. going. Maybe, across we'll, maybe we'll put something out. If you wear an HWPO shirt, we'll give away two echo bikes. What? <laughs> There you go. You know, never know. Maybe, maybe we'll, maybe we'll play a game so you can have more shirts. Hey, I would, I, I, I am a sincere believer in um, rising boats raise all tides. Rising tides raise all boats. That's what I said, Mister O'Keefe. Yeah. You go. Hey, will you please do that? <laughs> we we haven't we, like we haven't we don't sell shirts. That's part of the problem. I mean, Matt, don't match shirt. With Nike has sold. Um, you know, what do you so, mean sold? It's done. No, no, no. This they still have it. Like it, there's, I mean, I don't know. It might be sold out right now, but they've sold many of those. But we like these the stuff that the our team wears. We we haven't we haven't sold any of that stuff. But you so if I went to HWPO site, there's not like a merch. Yeah, we haven't. You know, we've just been so busy with you know. It's just you know I've been in that business for one. And there's plenty of great ways to do it. It's just um, we're so busy with everything we're doing and, you know, related to the app and, and the training business that it's just not something I want to focus our team on right now, honestly. it's Well, it doesn't make – no matter how many shirts we make, I feel – or sell. I mean we obviously don't sell anything compared to probably what Matt could sell or does sell. But it, I feel like every any money we make, we end up – it immediately goes into just giving shirts away. That's the that see. So I've been in that business. That's how I got my start in this industry. And and you know, you know, th- you think about it. Every shirt you give away, you got to sell two to make money. You know, so it's like one of those things that we've get we like semifinals. We gave a ton of shirts away. Just you know, it was a marketing expense. Right. I, I don't. Um, the the merch business. You really need to be focused on the merch business, and we will at some point while we're ready. It's just you know we've had so much going on. We have eleven full time people now. Like we're running around crazy. So, um, it just, I mean, wouldn't it be clever if at the Paper Street Coffee booth that I'm sharing, if we, I printed a thousand black CEO shirts with gold writing and gave them away for free and said you had to wear it Sunday? Wouldn't that be so clever? I mean, that'd be one twelfth of the people at the venue would be wearing black be a CEO very shirts. Smart move on your part. Just, just to, and 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 then not only that, you get a free thirty dollars shirt. But on top of that, if you take a picture and post it on your social, you get you have a chance to get a uh, free Echo bike. Now we're talking. That's just, a market. Just, that's just a mar- saying a- that's a marketing plan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think of it more as just throwing rocks at passing cars. <laughs> I would say, honestly, if you were out there, you'd get a lot out of it. Like, it's just so many people in one place, but I get where you're at. Like, it's just as easy to get people on. You've That's never not- been to the CrossFit Games without a job. Me. No. Yeah. Zero. And neither and neither have I. Yeah. And I went to the street parking event, and it was fucking massive, and it was fun, but I didn't have a job there. And I was completely um, overwhelmed by the 10 people that recognized me. And, um, and, uh, yeah, I, I just can't imagine. Super cool event. Looked awesome. Those guys, yeah. are, Miranda, Miranda and Julian are awesome people. They, they and just, you stay, and you stay hidden at the games too. Yeah. I mean, I'm busy. Like it, it's, um, this year I'll probably be out and about more. Um, we're doing a lot of, you know, well, we got to get Matt around somehow or another, so I'll probably help with that a bit. But like, we're at, we're doing workout activations on and off site, and I'll be a little more present. In the past, like I've been buried, you know, either with Matt in the back or last year working with Noble, um, 
you know. What so, do you do at Noble? What's your job there? I, I help them with partnerships. Um, so in general, you know. Are you employed by them? No, no, oh. no. I just, you know, they, they're, um, I've known Marcus, Michael, Todd since it started. You know, I, I met those guys in CrossFit New England when this was, with, when the thing was a dream, really. We were starting out together in the industry and great friends. Awesome, awesome friends first. And um, they just, I love how they, do things uh, you know i love what they built i love what they they stand for um i honestly love being around those guys so anything i can be a part of with them is awesome um so your your main jobs your main vocations your mo main things that keep you busy every day are being the ceo of hwpo see yeah that that's taking most of my time you know uh, and an agent you're still an agent I am. Yeah. And, and Daniel Robbins, uh, works with me as well. And, you know, he's most day to day with that, but yeah, you know, I plug in with him daily and the HWPO volume has been awesome. I won't say insane, like it's some sort of burden. It's been insane, but it's been amazing. So we've just been really busy. Um, and Harry just come on, which has been a huge help, but you know, getting him moving, um, and he got moving fast, but, um we're, you know, we're doing events all over the place programming we're traveling a bunch we've got a european tour coming up uh, we're we're launching a new 2.0 version of how we approach programming uh which has a trickle down to to tech so we have a huge app update that will come can with you that. tell me about that what's that mean 2.0 yeah, programming? It's, it's so we're, we're we're it's it's a retool of our approach trying to build some more cohesiveness between everything we do um, you know, we have a lot of different tracks right now. Uh, we want to build some more continuity between the tracks um, so that, you know, it's a little easier for people to be a community. We, we've, we have a like non-negotiable session one, day one training plan where people enter our program, they start on day one. And it's, you know, it's something Matt, you know, was really, uh, was really important to Matt when we started and it works, you know, people love As it. As opposed to if you join in and it's 17 days in, you, you have to wait until it starts over again on day one. True. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. And so we have people that have been on the program for hundreds of days, you know, and, you know, there are, you know, sort of first group and, um, but you know, nobody's sort of repeated started on day one. We're just like continuing to build programming. But I think what, you know, um, the app will help us do this, but there'll be some intuitiveness to, you know, allowing how people might do conditioning daily to be cohesive, you know, because conditioning can be conditioning as long as it's sort of formatted the same, doesn't matter where you are. But we just have a lot of progression-based training, whether it's strength or conditioning. So there's just some complexity there, but, um, you know, Harry's brought in some great ideas. We've been thinking about it a long time. Um, you know, there's a lot to, we, we, we'll probably finalize in the next two to three weeks what it will look like, announce it, probably roll it out to, in, sometime in Q4. Um, I think there'll be some more free programming that we'll give to people um, to get people in to experience what we're doing a little more. Um, but yeah, just busy, busy with, busy with that most of the time, you know, it's, it's been super fun. Well, uh, what I, what I heard there, sorry if, if I, I didn't, um, because a lot of the stuff I don't even understand because I just my workouts are so basic. But it, it it sounded like it's going to be more. You're trying to figure out what a way to make it a more communal event, a more uh, HWPO, not just like here's my workout, I go in my garage, do it, but a community, like maybe I'm in the Stone Ages, but maybe like a message board where people can talk, or a group over here, or you could get together with people in your area, kind of like uh, I'm what I'm thinking of is street parking. I mean, that's the, they have so much True. power in their community, right? They, they do. Honestly, they do the best job of it. I mean, uh, you know, I've picked Miranda's brain at times. Like she, um, man, they, they do such a great job. They're, they're a beacon in our industry um, to be, to be followed, you know? So we, we, we just approach it differently, which is fine. And I think that we have something really special with how we go about it. Yes, is the answer is to create a little more opportunity for people to connect through what they're doing. Um, I mean, it hasn't, you know, you know, what's interesting is like, you know, you could go in this like, don't fix what isn't broke, you know, thing, you know, you could look at it that way, because, you know, we continue to grow and people love the program. And there's a lot of success stories. 
Um, I think it's just like giving the opportunity without them having to sacrifice what we know is the right way to train to be able to do some things together occasionally and build some more, you know, community outside of the app, like, you know, gathering points for people. There's a lot of things we've been talking about. We're, we're, we're doing some work in Europe where, you know, hopefully we can expand more over there, um, you know, get some people to help us over there too. It's just, um, yeah, I mean, getting more people together. I mean, cause we know that works, right? Like people working out together works. So, um, you know, we're, we're working hard for the people that have believed in us and subscribed to us to, to, you know, enhance their experience. So we're not just going to sit there and say, Hey, we do a great job. You're getting better every day. Uh, thanks. You know, we, we want to advance. So we're really lucky. We have a full tech team, dev team. Sorry. Um, Hey, they're in the Ukraine. They are. They are. Yeah. They're doing really well. I, I, um, what city are they in? Can you, you uh, say or no? No, I, I can't. No, it basically they, they're on the, so there's a river that runs through the country. Right. And they're, they're, you know, they're trending towards the, the Western side of Ukraine, but they're on the other side of the river, like in this pocket. And it's like a little bit of a, like a dev tech pocket. And it's, you know, thankfully been okay like there's never really oh the ukrainian tech pocket yes i'm very familiar with that <laughs> so it's like you know it's one of these things that um where yeah it's focusing there i probably can point to it and you won't see me point i think it's right this thing oh i thought that was a river that's a fucking highway what do i know that's oh the, this thing right here that's either a lake or a river but yeah this thing you're talking about this body of water yeah so it's like see that the little, Dnipro like, river yeah that horse like yeah it's like it's it's probably probably up in there um but anyway they like we check in consistently and they're doing great like they you know the females that work in the business had left and gone to Poland because there's you know basically all the females left the country and um uh, and then the dev team's still locked in. A lot of them are going in the office now every day again. Uh, it's weird like that, right? Are we yeah. like, do we support the females leaving the country or do we think that that's sexist and we're against that? I mean, I, I thought, where, I thought, where, where do we fall on that? I thought it was, I thought it was admirable for, you know, I, the, the good. Men, me, me too. The men to say, you know, hey, we're going to defend the country. You guys go and continue to work where you can. And the kids and wives left. And so, yeah, they're, um, but yeah, they're, they're, I mean, man, what an insane part of our story that those guys, like, I mean, we launched March 12th. I mean, if you look back, like, I think the bombs started flying like that week, you know, it was like, you know, this insane time for them as well as us. And, and they've never skipped a beat. So uh, we have, you know, an immense amount of gratitude for those guys. They continue to grind, you know, they begged to not, lose the work early on you know we were just trying to be sensitive to you know them having other things going on obviously so how do you find uh, tech guys in ukraine how did you find them so we uh, matt and i invested in a tech business called fitter which is a consumer platform so it's a coaching platform that you know smaller programming arms or a individual coach will put programming on and, and have students or you know clients go on to get their programming like a true coach type of platform um and that you know they white labeled their app for us and then you know we've developed some differentiators between what we do and they do now but they're you know we're we're essentially merged up with those guys so matt and i invested in those guys is this it uh, f-i-t-r not e-r fuck these guys <laughs> F-I-T-R. Yeah. M-T. Wow, that is so cool. And and how, if you how did you how did these guys pop up on your radar? We when we like decided that we were gonna, you know, pursue going on our own and building our own app. Um, I had talked to these guys quite a bit when I was, you know, working at Loud Live. Um, and they you what know what language did you talk to them in? Well, so the, they're, they're, the company Fitter is based in London. The dev team's in the Ukraine. Okay. So, yeah, the, Le Leon Cassidy. Um, you know who, who's a part of the business is Steve Fawcett, former games athlete. And so Steve um, was a recognizable face. We took a call. They, they're interested in, you know, 
when I, at the time I first talked to him, I was like, Hey, you're with a bunch of athletes that have programs Would they consider using our platform instead of the others that are in the business. And then when it come time that we were going to do this, they were one of our first calls. It was like, Hey, you know, we're looking for somebody to build our app white label. We really like your product. Are you interested? And, um, it kind of, kind of went from there. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. And and then so can you imagine how thankful those guys are that they have a, a job still? Yeah, it's um I mean the 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 economy, I mean I I guess anyone's thankful for a job right now. Yeah, it, it, it's it's interesting like, you know, I think we we try to look at it that way. You know, maybe that's us, you know, in justification, but like I truly like we've literally looked at, you know, tried to tell those guys like, "Hey, like go do what you need to do. And they're like, no, please don't take the work away. But yeah, it makes me feel good because they're really grateful um, that they have work, you know, fitter provides them as much work as we do. So separately, we're both giving them a ton of work and it's, um, is it complicated doing business with them? Like, like paying them? No, all money still flows freely in the world. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) They don't, um, no, that's not complicated at all. (laughs) So no, no, they're but they quote incredible people. I mean, dude, they're like there was a point at early on where the the lead sent a slack to us and said, Hey, like I hope it's okay. I need a couple days off. And we're like, Yeah, dude, whatever whatever you need. He's like, I gotta build a bomb shelter. And I was wow. like Wow, that's a that's a moment in life that you you don't think you'll ever cross. You know, you're just like, What? Like, yes, take a week off. I mean that's not it but but that's crazy you know so um and and by by the way build a bomb shelter to be able to work is like their focus so they're just like they're really hard oh it's really an we need to build an office underground essentially yeah and so they're um they have not skipped a beat like at all it's crazy they're they're amazing yeah so we're we're very fortunate um, Matt, how many podcasts have you done? <laughs> well, am I, am I, am, is my face too many places? It's, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a little, it's a loaded question. I'm, I'm steering you down a dark alley. I don't, not, I don't know. I, I've been on yours a bunch. Yeah. I, 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 think, this, I think you've been on it more than anyone. This is, it makes you it, official. Oh, maybe I've had some. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, yeah. But those other guys were on like every day. So, right. Yeah. Right. But I, um, well, I mean, I was on every day at Wadapalooza and then a bunch prior, but no, I mean, yeah, I mean, I've done some, it's, it's spotty. Like we did a bit, a bit. Do you oh, ever feel like you, do you say no? I do. I do. do. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's not like, you know, if that wasn't has, a dig by the way. No, I don't want, you know, that's not a, like, I don't have time for like, I don't, um, yeah. I mean, I'm not like it. I mean, you can see it even with my social, like I, I'm, I'm not really like interested in building my you know, person as much as I am talking about either cool people I work with or cool things our business is doing or talk to cool people that, you know, are contributing to our space. Yeah. I've gotten some random ones where I'm just like, yeah, you know, I'm good. Um, but the, the, you know, what I, about I, this line, do you like this line? Hey, you're the, um, I'm starting a podcast. I'd like you to be my first guest. How do you feel about that as an approach? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one i think you use that with me the, the um i'm sorry I say, I when i get say, that one i'm like are you fucking kidding me <laughs> the i have done a few of late that you know matt and i both have been very public about our recovery uh, most uh, a lot lately like we did he did an episode on, on our youtube channel and you know he and i went to the phoenix and we're really open about it and talked openly on that and um I've really enjoyed getting to talk about that because being someone in recovery, I really know how much that can help some people. So um, that's something I'd never say no to. So, um, you know, I've been a a bit out and about on that um, and get a lot of great messages about how it helps people. So that, that part has been really fun and rewarding. Um, Love the Phoenix spend, you know, as much time as I can over there. And I'm really proud that Matt too is using his platform to, you know, hopefully help some people. Cause that's like, that stuff is bananas hard. And, you know, for somebody to see him and his success or, you know, me, you know, and what I'm doing and be able to say, well, shit, those guys were in the gutter 
like I was, because none of us are any different, you know? So it's, um, I really, yeah, you know, Brandon's I, different. I, <laughs> she is, she's elite. She's elite. Um, I, I, I've been seeing, a, uh, I've been really, well, I watch a lot of, I never had watched a podcast. I had this podcast and now I watch podcasts before I have guests on to like, just see what they're up to. So like before you like tonight, when I get, I have Matt Torres coming on tomorrow. I already watched one podcast that he was on. And then tonight when I, when I get off with you, I'll watch an, another one that he's on and then he'll come on in the morning. What'd you watch with me? Uh, I, which one did I watch with you? I, there were two that I watched with you. I watched one. Uh, you were on the Clydesdale, you and Matt. Yeah. And um, that one I watched first. What was the other one? Coffees, Pods, and Wads. I've been on his a few times, actually. He's That dude's fucking good. He's awesome. I really? don't want to go on his anymore. I went on once because he, he, he the motherfucker just lets me talk. I need I need someone like me who interrupts me. I don't want to go on that thing. He Fucking. is the best listener in podcast history. I have to tell you. I, it's funny you say that. Whenever I've been on, I'm like, I've been talking for like 10 minutes. This guy hasn't even batted an eye. This is amazing. Really? Well, what really sucks really is he's hey, if he gets a shitty guest on, you want to be like, motherfucker, interrupt. Stop him. <laughs> oh, I got to meet him in London briefly. I was running around. I was there. Catron was competing. And, um, I'm looking forward to spending some more time with him. He, he's a really nice guy. He, yeah. Yeah. Similarities with you, like just said, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to work my ass off and, you know, show up and grind this thing. And I'm glad it's starting to play out well for him. There, there, um, there are some. So these are the two. This is what I, I was discovering in the last week, the criteria for podcast. There's you, you might go on a podcast like his with, with a great host and but but it might not get a lot of views. But what if you go onto a podcast? There's a podcast out there I'm thinking of. I won't, I'm not going to say the name, but it's so fucking bad that I think it's brand diminishing that people go on it. Really? And, oh, it's so bad. It but, it, a, but, it, but, it get, but it gets a ton of engagement. No, 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 no. And it doesn't get engagement. No, no, it doesn't get any oh, engagement okay. either. But it's but 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 the, but in this space, it seems like um, like Matt will go on any podcast except mine. Um, and it's just fucking crazy. And so I see, or, or, or like T, I'll see them on these podcasts, but, or, but, but not even those two. Like someone will come on my podcast and it will get fucking, they'll get blown up. They'll put on a thousand fucking followers. Their shit will blow up. Like everything I see, like just their whole shit gets excited, right? They get stimulated. Or they're like, holy shit, I sold a bunch of seminars. They send me a fucking check. I don't cash it, but like, you know, shit like that. Then I see them go on this other podcast. And I'm like, why did you do that? They just, they, like, you talked about um, what you, what you like better, Frenchies mustard or uh, ketchup. That's because they have a shitty agent. Yes, thank you. I knew we'd get somewhere <laughs> with this. That is, you know, what's interesting about you know, I you only know, one you, person's ever come on this show and look bad. It was OPT. Everyone else leaves here looking great because I'm such <laughs> a schmuck. Every like stand next to me and you look like a fucking god. That that is that that is um, the whole. You know, it's funny. Matt loves doing podcasts that people, you know, might have other interests than just this. Uh -huh. Like, the, you know, so that that's like sometimes where there's a flyer taken there to say, he says, I mean, we say no to a lot of podcasts for him. Um, but yeah, I mean, he, he's intrigued with those that like might be from outside. Uh -huh. the and sometimes that stuff can be a little bit interesting, obviously. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. um, but yeah, that that's um, there are a lot of podcasts in our space. There are a lot, and and e and, and even some great ones like um uh. So someone today contacted me, who's worth a shitload of money, a fucking shit ton of money, like, and they said, "Hey, I listened to your podcast." I said, "Oh," and they said. And I heard you talking about how you're the greatest fucking uh, uh, direct uh, media director that's ever lived. I said, yeah, correct. That's correct. <laughs> and they said, well, can you help me get, you know, I want to start this new branch of my business. I said, absolutely. I'll tell you how to do it. What I was critiquing when they called me was the fact that CrossFit Games has a podcast and they put Adrian Bosman on it. And it has it, last night when I looked, it had 41 views. 
And then J Justin Berg was on it and had like 220 views. And it's so hard to find. And at that point, I'm thinking their their time has to be more valuable. Like, the, like if you were going to talk to someone for two hours and only 41 people were going to watch it, he, your time was more valuable than that, right? Like, And so if I see Matt on a podcast and it has 800 views, I'm starting to think, well, his time has got to be more valuable than that, right? There has to be some uh, – there's some fancy marketing word for it, right? Yeah, no, <clears throat> you know, some sometimes the, the well, you know, his pushing of, of a conversation can be really helpful to those platforms. So, like, I think that hell that, yeah, look at me, look what he did for me. Thank you, Matt. That's crazy. <laughs> there, I'm not joking. I'm, I mean, I'm joking, but I'm not joking. Joking, not joking. The Matt and Josh part, RIP, RIP. <laughs> no, no, I don't think so. You think it's coming back? And I'm open. I, I've sent him a couple. I've, I've sent those guys. I send those guys a text message every three months. What, you want to get on this weekend or what? <laughs> oh, man. The world <laughs> would shake if the three of you showed up again. That'd be amazing. Listen, listen. I'm going to do it fucking right now. Listen, I'm going to text these motherfuckers right now. Okay, go on. So tell me. Tell okay, tell me. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, it's funny. I've done I've done Adrian's podcast. Um, Adrian's? I, what do you mean Adrian's? No, no, you mean, oh, oh, well, that's a good podcast. The one with him and uh, Pat Sherwood. I'm not with Pat, not Bob. Are you talking about Bob? Who, who are you talking about? I was saying that Chase Ingram has a podcast that he uh, does for CrossFit Games. I thought you were talking about Adrian Conway. And it's fucking, oh, oh, and, it, and it's fucking amazing. And Chase is amazing. I'd argue that it may be the best in the space. But it's buried and it doesn't get any views. And I just think, why? I, I, I mean, and when Adrian comes on tomorrow, ask him why he did it. Like, don't you have better things to do with your time? Or push that thing to the fucking front. Yeah. Right? Are you like, like, you guys aren't hiding Matt. He's your, he's your, he's the big dicks, big swinging dick. So you push him up to the front. Adrian Bosman's the big swinging dick. Push him up to the front. And it's, same with the coffee. Well, the coffee wads and pods, like, they should be reposting the shit out of his stuff. I mean, his, his, his shit's amazing. I haven't listened to, uh, that podcast yet was it good with adrian yeah it, it was the most in, it was the most intimate conversation i've uh, ever seen with um with adrian uh okay josh bridges and matt <laughs> will you help me compose this just send them just send them the link say say hey come talk to come talk to o'keefe no i don't want to share you i want to <laughs> um uh, uh shall we do a podcast this week how about that there you go. That's kind of like low pressure. There's, Shall... nothing, there's nothing going on, you know? They're... Shall we do a podcast this week? And I won't even use a question mark. Dave taught me that. Even though you're asking a question, don't use a question mark because you're really not asking a question. You're demanding it. You dem that, that's, that's a statement. Yeah. Shall we do a podcast this week? Period. <laughs> it's done. Okay. That's good. Haven't you done? Have you done it with Josh? Yeah, I've done. I've done a couple. Well, I've done like two or three with Josh. Yeah, I've done like two or three with Josh. The thing is, is these guys like have something else going on. Like Josh and Matt have. Like this is my. Matt's busy. Yeah, I. This is my oxygen. Th th for them, it's like I mean, th this is my cake, and for them, this podcast are just candles. And it's like no, I like I. So we're kind of on different. Um, I'll give you, I can give you the answer for Matt. No. <laughs> <laughs> he already texted you and you told him no? Don't do I'm it. on my phone. He didn't text me. It, it's just chaos in, in a good way. Like, we just have a lot. We're all, we're traveling our, everybody out the end of the week. And, you know, he's finishing up with Mallory. O'Keefe, the last time he told me he was busy, I saw him show up on four podcasts within the next seven days. That so, won't, that won't be the case this week. So, I, so I, I don't believe busy, but. Yeah, they're they're um, man. He's been. Um, I, I hope I hope there's more. Well, I mean, he's not doing it for this, but like, it's such a cool story. His coaching story. I mean, he's doing it like he did, being the best athlete ever. He's just you know so focused and engaged. I'm really proud of him. I mean, he just like he doesn't know how to do anything, but all in, which is a great trait and can be very painful for you as an individual at times too, because you just don't know how to turn off, but man, he's such a good coach. Um, and he's, you know, done such a great job for, for the athletes we're working with right now. And I'm excited to see they're, you know, they're, they're ready. And 
excited to see him at the games again, you know, engaged. And I, I think it's brewing up a lot of, you know, old memories of what it was like to, to travel out there. I mean, the same pressure for him, I think, and the same, you know, sort of whatever anxiety or whatever would come with, you know, going to be tested is there because he just cares so much. It's been awesome, honestly. I hope people get to see some of it. It's been really fun for me to watch. Um, do you know who James Krause is? He's a UFC fighter. He's an active yeah. fighter. Yeah, I know the name. Okay. And um, he fights at 171. I think he's won his last like five fights, but he's been so focused on coaching. And um, he said he's more excited for one of his athletes to win a title than himself. I and I, and I was thinking, I bet you – I bet you a lot of people would have trouble believing this, but I bet you Matt's like, I bet you this new, this, I don't know if it's Matt 3.0, 5.0, whatever version. I bet you he thinks that too. I bet you Matt's like, this, this is, this is more important to me than me winning. I mean, it's just, the, it just seems like the winner's mindset. Or well, you're not, or you, you know, he's not in control like he was before, right? Like, you know, he had complete control. It was on him to execute on the floor. And yeah, he cares as much, you know, so it's, it's, um, I've watched him at semifinals and, um, I mean, he wants it bad for these guys, you know, you know, I watched him with Jason and I watched him with Mallory. Uh, it's awesome. It's so cool. It's, um, I'm fi I'm fired up. I'm fired up to, you know, it's, it's, it's funny. Last year was different, right? Like we were at the games for the first time without him competing. It was just a different type of year, you know? And, and, um, I'm excited. I'm excited to be back in that fashion where, you know, he's really, you know, engaged and into it. He has a purpose there. I think he felt last year. It's kind of like, you know, what am I doing here? You know, it's like waving and shaking hands. It's like not really his thing. You know, he wants to be active. So um, going to the games as a spectator after you go there as a job is, 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 is tough. I think. I've, I've only been as a job. Um, I, I would, I would think, I would think it would be tough, you know, you, you know, it's, uh, maybe a day, but not, 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 not the full, full week, but yeah, it's, um, yeah, you, you put it, you put it right. It's, um, I need purpose. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's uh, <laughs> the games this man. I, I really need to get some rest this week. That is a big week. <laughs> do you know what I used to do too? Okay. O um, O'Keefe, I would, I would start walking like 10 miles a day or more, 20 miles a day uh, prior to the games or every other day. To, I mean, yeah. I had to walk around a lot carrying a camera and I would carry like a 10 pound med, med ball just to train for the game, just train for that week. Well, I'm I, not joking. I, I play, I play golf and I carry my golf bag and that's ten, nine to 10 miles when you play golf. So damn, I'm, is I'm, it really? Yeah. Most golf courses, you know, are about eight to 10 miles to walk, depending on how long the course is. And you're on your feet for like four hours. Uh, yeah, at least. And you're, you know, it's usually hilly up and down hills, but it's awesome. Yeah, I, I, I generally, I generally will walk and carry my bag. So, um, HWPO is this massive training program, but mm -hmm. Matt Fraser as a coach is boutique. Yes. Right. There's just two. Right? Well, is there three? Is Mark? Is is he? Would you say he's Marconi's coach too? Jake Mark. Yeah, coach? he coached Jake for sure. So coach or Jake, coaches? He coaches. You know, I don't know what Jake's going to do moving forward. I don't know if he'll keep competing. He, he loves the business side, and he's very important to what we do. That's not why he he doesn't need to not compete for us. He just is interested in more on that side. So you know, I don't think he's made his decision yet. But but Matt I Fraser is the coach, so officially yeah. he's Mal O'Brien's. And Jason with a Y Hoppers, yeah, coach, and no one else. He is, and, and Jake Jake works a lot with Jason day to day too. So the two of them are sort of you know tag team in that. But yeah, Matt, yeah, there's nobody else. Um, and we have athletes at the games, multiple that follow the program. Some you know of some course. we some we found out through semifinals, but uh, I think we're gonna look at that too. This whole like 2.0 thing is just. You know, um, you know, Harry's come over. Harry's coached elite athletes um, to the games. You know, uh, he's currently he's going to coach Sam Quant this year at the games. He's not, you know, that's not, you know, that's not an HWPO related thing. He was doing that before he came. Um, but, you know, we're going to look at that hard 
you know, post games, how do we service that crowd? Um, you know, it, it, you know, do we bring coaches on, you know, do we, as coaches take on more people? I don't think that's the case for Matt though. I think Matt is where he wants to be. He has a ton of responsibility for us media wise, which some people would just be like, yeah, whatever. But like, it's hours daily that he's filming videos. And so, you know, it's hard to scale without him. Um, you know, as we expand and, you know, we're bringing on an Olympic lifting coach. So, you know, he's going to have some responsibility there. I'm really excited about that. Do you, do you know Amy Everett? I do. Yeah. She's good. She's going to be, uh, that's, it's, it's, that's Cody Anderson's. Um, yeah, yeah. 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 She's coming on to be the face of HWPO lift, which will be. That's a, spe- that's a special lady. That's like, she's like th- this much heart and like this much human being. We just spent some time out at the event in, in Canada with her and, um, man she's just our kind of people she's awesome so really excited for her to come on and we're looking at expanding into other sports so uh, we're actively talking to a golfer we're actively talking to an mma fighter we're gonna try to build training programs for sport as well just not crossfit as a sport so you know lifestyle training like like you know training for life um and then training for sport specific crossfit and then other sports as well you know i mean we believe that this is the right way to train no matter what you're doing so we're working really hard on that so there's a lot to do matt's getting involved in a lot of it you know um his vision his input's really important so adding more athletes to his plate's not gonna happen have you ever seen a successful kids program i don't mean like a i don't mean like a one-off right i don't mean like a, a gym that has like a flourishing crossfit kids program but have you ever seen like a a kids training program like I mean, have you ever seen the CrossFit Kids um, uh, manual? I haven't actually seen the manual. I yeah, not very many people of- have. It would it will blow your mind, dude. I, w- I was a part of a gym that had a really good program. Um, you know, it was one of the original affiliates, North Shore CrossFit up in Danvers. And um, they, you probably know the, the founders of it. And the, the, um, they had a flourishing kids program for a while. Um, it was really cool. CrossFit New England had one of the biggest kids program. A lot of the kids that were a part of CrossFit Kids at CrossFit New England are now competitors, you know. Um, but I, I mean, like, like if you see, by the way, if anyone wants to ask Matt O'Keefe a question, you're welcome to ask. And if you say something stupid, I'm going to hang up on you. <laughs> Go ahead um, and say something stupid. <clears throat> um, I, I'm talking, so this manual that, that CrossFit put out is like every, it's like basically like the, something the CDC wishes they had. It's everything basically your kids should be doing from day one till, till whenever. Awesome. And it's like, it's like to be able to crawl, it's to be able to walk, it's to be able to like um, hang for one second. I mean, and they have the daily structure. It's so fucking crazy. I don't think this book's online either. I want to say maybe Todd Widman put it together. It is nuts. I have a copy of it. It's like, it's, it's overwhelming. It's so fantastic. But, like you see this program, you see all these successful programs out there, but I just don't see a successful kids program. By that I mean like, hey, this is how you sh- today with, for twenty minutes your kids should stand on a skateboard. Today for twenty minutes your kids should show throw a ball with their left hand. Today, I mean, it doesn't. It's it's obviously not going to be clean and jerks, but today you should have your kid, um, uh, you know, run sprints with a one minute break. Like just some really basic. It's hard. I mean, you got that requires the parents, right? So it's like right. another, yes. another layer, you know. It's just it's um. No one gives a fuck about anybody. <laughs> that that's hard. It's I have hard not. enough getting people to exercise themselves. I, you nailed it. Fuck, I don't know why I didn't think of that. You're right. That's it. You can't even get you know. But let's get the parents to work out. That's the answer, right? Right, right. You know, that's the that's the answer. I mean, I know I could see that in my house. Like I've, you know, made this part of my life the last you know it has been through college but like really purposefully the last 10 years with crossfit and everybody in my house does a version of it now you know it's it's uh it's infectious um why would anyone do any other training program other than proven mayhem or hwpo you have these three crazy dominant fucking characters uh, why, why would anyone do anything else? I don't know. I don't, I don't really pay a whole lot of attention other than to what we're doing. I mean, if you wanted to be the games champ, wouldn't you? Wouldn't, I mean, doesn't th- those three seem like a slam dunk? Yeah, you'd think, you'd think that uh, people that... Like, what the fuck is Medeiros doing over there with Adam Neifer? Neifer. 
Adam. CrossFit Fort Fort Vancouver. That typically was around before cars. Top five. Adam is a top five human being. True. He, he is. And Adam I agree. Is, I agree. What Adam has done really well, um, and I respect a ton, is, you know, and it's really our ethos, too, is just, you know, you're either an export expert or not and if you're not you find that knowledge from someone else and you know it's the same for us it's just you know hey brought on a strength coach or bring on a lifting coach it's you know we're you know we could sell any type of programming and probably you know have people subscribe to it but we want it to be the best and adam's been really good at managing you know different people to help justin you know and um he and, and adam has a ton of knowledge himself a ton of experience as a competitor um, he's done a great job. Yeah. Really, really good job with him. And you're right. He is a top, he's, he's a, um, he's a quality human being. He did. He really, he really is. I mean, he, like, I, I just, I feel good about myself after I spend time with him. That's like gotta be one of the best things you could say about somebody. Like, I just feel good after I, I spent some time with Adam Neifer. Yeah. He's not polluted or jaded. <laughs> he's probably not on social. No, right, right, right. <laughs> Are are you all done with Wadapalooza? I am. Yeah. Like, right. y- y- will you be go? Is is Wadapalooza done? No, no, no. I'll be there this year. My, my, um, my so, I mean, our entire team will be there. Oh, I'm excited to go back. There's still I still have some you know friends there that are gonna help run it this year. And um, Dil- Dylan's there still. So awesome. yeah, great great guy and does a great job. I'm, I'm happy for him and. You know, if we can support the event, we will. Um, you know, I'm 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 proud of my time there. I'm proud of my departure, as you know, I believe those guys are with how you know we moved on, and um, you'll see us there and supporting those guys. Like we're we're supporting Live Live. We're doing the we're we're programming the Madrid event. So, you know, we're going to kick off our European tour in Madrid, but we are the programming partner of the Madrid Championship which is huge this year. It's 2,500 athletes. They're going back to Cajamaica where they had uh, invitational or regionals, which I'm sure you've been to some of that. And um, so, yeah. Um, when you were there, were you the, um, did, 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 when you were at Loud and Live, did what was Wadapalooza their first event they took on? It was, they had purchased um, a, a majority share in the business I don't know, like a year and a half prior to, you know, two years prior to me getting there. So they had done one um, and I consulted on their second, which was 2018. And then I merged with them right after the 2018 Waterpool. So they, that was the, wow. Only so not even that long, you weren't even there that long, but it seems like you were there forever. Yeah. I was there like, you know, four and some change years and um, or five, I don't know, whatever I did. There was a COVID waza, but if COVID waza, I we, never heard that. We didn't do one one year, unfortunately. But that, um, man, I learned I learned a lot there. That was like going to business school and back. Like really fortunate. I mean, no, I, I'm really grateful for my time there, and um, and that event's wild, so cool. It, you know, I, I did my I did my my time and my part, and it was time for me to move. Adrian said, I don't remember which podcast it was in. By the way, I was only going to have you on 45 minutes. I really appreciate you staying on this long. I don't know if I told you that. Oh, no, you didn't. We're fine. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, Adrian said on one of those podcasts, it was either the um, the one with Peter, the Coffee Wads and Pods, or the ch- one with Chase, the CrossFit Games one. But he said, if 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 you're not thick-skinned, if you're not like – if, if you don't have the ability to just take on a lot, the CrossFit space is not for you. The CrossFit community is not for you. Like the cross, like not, maybe the, I, should, I should be careful about how loose I am when paraphrasing it, but, but it is a, it is a, it is a space with a lot of strong and passionate characters and winners and people who are committed. And uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's intense it's in a good way. Intense. It's where successful. Extreme, people thrive. It's called extreme ownership. It's, um, I've talked a bit about this with Waza, which was it's it's um, your best friend and sometimes your worst enemy. But, you know, when you have, you know, I I was associating it to volunteer, the volunteer corps, you know, you have 1200 volunteers at Waza. The most beautiful thing about that event is how extreme those those people own their roles in the event for that matter. That's an event 
by the community. It has been from the beginning. Um, wouldn't be able to run without it. You know, as is the games for that matter. They have a huge volunteer core, and they just it's um, the passion runs so deep. And sometimes it can you know work against you a little bit. It's uh, you. I mean, the roles I've had, um, especially that one. If my skin wasn't thick, uh, I would have crumbled. You know, you, you, <laughs> you, you would take you take you take a lot of heat. You know, I feel like my my skin thickened through my career in CrossFit because you know you you know you it's required from day one. Like if you want to be out in front and doing things forward facing and be involved in the sport, you know, you're going to be challenged and there's nothing wrong with that. Honestly. You're the first generation of your age to deal with what the people younger than us have no idea. And by that, I mean, I'll give, give you an example that for people who are listening that you'll understand completely. There was a point when I was at CrossFit where we, we controlled everything. We were the loudest voice in the room, right? It was just like YouTube, yep. TV, websites and then all of a sudden this thing showed up on this uh, called instagram and facebook and then it was like oh they could become the people inside the brand could become more popular than the brand and it, it became instead of it there became although you were one creature in one ecosystem it became competitive and then everyone had a voice and then everyone could talk shit and like you even saw crossfit go through this and you're seeing brands go through this which is to probably me and you is i don't know about you but to me it's hilarious because the most where we grew up the brands would walk around like this fuck you and now brands are like trying to make everyone happy and i'm like what are you doing stay it, true to your fucking charter like just and if you don't succeed stay in, because you'll never have enough energy making everyone happy stay true to your charter if you sink then start another business but but if you try to make everyone happy you're and we're seeing uh people and brands go through this and people like me and you i guess it's the thickening of the skin are kind of like wow, they're never going to, like, we had to do a shift. <clears throat> I don't know. Do you, do you see the kind of the picture I'm painting? I do. And, and that's like, you know, there's, you're talking about what our first part of this conversation was, which is the trap of social, you know, you, you know, you can, you know, do something miraculous or, you know, produce something great. And, but you're, what you're, what you're speaking to is the most important, which is like, you can put your head on the pillow at night if you're doing the right thing by yourself, your culture, your brand, you know, like, you know, you don't have to, if you're explaining, you're losing, you know? So that's like, that's a really cliche statement, but it's the truth. So it's like one of those things where, you know, you can find. Wow. Can you break that down a little bit for me? If you're explaining, you're losing. T t I ask anybody listening you, like think about one situation where, you know, you, you felt like you needed to explain yourself that really was, there was a, a big positive outcome. I mean, I think there's like, you know, you have a fight with your wife and maybe, you, you know, explain what you were thinking and saying that's there's positive there. But when you're talking about on the public side where it's like, no, I meant this or no, just, you know, stay true to yourself, you know, be honest, you know, you know, have integrity, like the, all these things that, I mean, as long as you're like perfect there, you're going to be okay. You know, it's, um, lean, it's almost like lean into it. I could, I, when, a, when I can't even come close to doing, I can't snatch something once that Olivia curse there can snatch 50 times. I could make excuses well, so or right. I could, or I could lean into it and make fun of myself. The, these are the, it, it, one of them's fucking your, you end up looking like a Jack. I see. I get it now what you mean. If, you, well, if I start explaining to myself that I'm old and that the right. like I even when I watch the video I'm like well I haven't done a snatch in forever even that was making me cringe like oh why did I even say that we, Who cares? We, Matt worked with a guy um, we were really fortunate so this guy that founded TB12 with Tom Brady so his his body work guy's name's Alex Guerrero. what's TB12 I don't know what that is TB TB12 Sports is Tom Brady TV um, okay it's a it's um it's a sport physio business they work on you know rehab and pliability mobility um it's a lot of like deep tissue massage whatever so the, tom's guy alex guerrero who's a legend in sport um we were able to get him to do some work with matt and he, while he was like, competing yeah, yeah yeah so he worked he worked on matt like his last four years of his career and um and he it's funny as much as he worked on Matt's body, he worked on Matt's mind at times. And it was things like that. And that's an Alex Guerrero ism 
um, you know, Matt, you know, we would, you know, he'd Matt be on the table and getting some work and Alex would say, Matt, if you're explaining, you're losing. And he'd say it like every time we would see him. Yeah. And Matt would always leave there and be like, pretty simple. Al you know, Alex puts it pretty straight, but, um, that is so true. Like you just described one of them, you know, one, you know, one example of, you know, how you're not winning by making up excuses. Right. So it's, uh, yeah, I mean, that stuff, it's funny. I, it's really, it's really interesting. I know you're not even touching on this, but it's like, I got engaged in a pissing contest on social last week or two weeks ago. Um, my yeah, I cracked a joke about it that I, I cracked a joke about it on my Instagram. Oh, okay, cool. Um, well, you should. I, you know, it's it's so interesting. It's um, and I stood up for the Matt thought I was I was making fun of him. I was actually standing up for him. But but that's another thing. Go on, pissing contest. Yeah. yeah, but it was just you know, it's like one of those things where your cup runs over. And it's funny. I look back and I'm you know I'm not perfect by any stretch. I'm like what, what like what did I get of that? Get out of that? I got not, nothing out of that. You know, but you know, it was really nice. Some people come to our defense and like enough's enough, but it's like, you know, that's, there's no win there. Right. Like that, I, you know, it's like, I never comment on anything or even for that matter, very rarely ever read comments for that reason, because it's a dark tunnel, but that's another perfect example of it is like, you know, I'm on there explaining and I'm literally looking at it like 10 minutes later. I'm like, well, I fucking lost because yeah. Was, yeah. You know? I always feel like that too. Yes. That's why I always make a your mom joke. I just go straight for your mom. I just go nuclear. <laughs> so some people think I went nuclear. I was just kind of like, mm, you know, this is just like. I, I thought know. it was, though, I didn't, I didn't d dive into it too deep and I couldn't see the USA Today article because you had to pay for it. Um, but I just saw that someone was making fun of Matt for being picky about who he chose to work with. And I'm like, so I so I so, someone actually made it for me and sent it to me and it's a picture of me like posing and it's like I'm very choosy about who I put on my podcast for the exact <laughs> quote Matt and 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 later on I, I later on I had I explained on my podcast it, it, just to clear it up with Matt like hey Matt can pick whoever the fuck he wants if he, who do you want him just to go pick a homeless dude who's 65 like what the fuck that makes perfect sense what Matt said but on the other hand I'm a podcast slut I will have anyone on. Well, so obviously. look, I've been on more yeah. than anyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. O'Keefe. <laughs> yeah, so that is um that's something for people to think about. There's a nugget takeaway right there. If you're explaining, you're losing. Um I I was chatting with uh, Miranda and uh Julian about this. I, I think one of the biggest mistakes I don't know, big biggest mistakes isn't the isn't the right word. I think one of the things that would have been really cool is, is if Greg would have never got rid of CrossFit Santa Cruz if he would have kept it um and he would have turned it into a destination location oh my god there's the pull-up bar that annie did or blah 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 there's the bar that um greg amundsen did grace with and and, and would have kept that and you know you could go there and maybe only get to let, give people what they want let people go in there you can sign up for a time work out there um and um i was talking to um when I was talking to Miranda and Julian, I was like, Hey, you guys should think about having a brick and mortar spot that all your videos are made in. So then people could visit it. And I know you guys don't have a brick and mortar. And I know that someone asked you, I can't remember someone asked you one of the podcasts I listened to. Do you, are you, do you ever think about that? But uh, I, I, why not? Let's do it. We'll do it. I'm asking you to do it. Yeah. <laughs> the Vermont spot for all the weirdos that end up in that corner of the fucking country. It's not a crazy thought. I mean, the, you get the, the shirt. You, maybe you see Matt. Maybe you don't. Maybe you see Mal. Maybe you see Jason. Maybe you don't. Only a few people are let in an hour. You got to sign up. Yeah, it's um, we we are building a building, by the way. So oh, awesome! No, I mean, you know, Dave does that. You know, you can sign up and work at the ran work out at the ranch with Dave. I've seen, you, I've, I've seen that. Yeah, yeah. it's fucking I mean, rad. This is a cool place. I've been, I've been fortunate enough to be there a few times. That's uh. Very historic if, you know, you love our sport. Um, so You can do the same run T and Matt did. You can sign up for an hour session. Dave will put you through it, and it's like – and it's cheap. I mean, relative. Yeah, we're not – we're building a building for our team. We're going to have some housing in it um, so that athletes can come in that follow the program and train a bit, you know, periodically. And a bigger gym. You know, the gym we have at Matt's house now uh, – We've we've completely outgrown it, uh, so we're building a, a 
pretty substantial. So Matt bought a piece of land. It looks small, by the way. I said, told Matt that once, and he got it's a little mad not. at me. It looks tiny. It's not though. It's, it's just not, oh. so much equipment in it, and it's you, you know it having looks narrow. More, it looks like I like LeBron could touch both walls. It's like a, it's like the width of a two, like a little wider than a two car garage with higher ceilings. Okay, but it's um, but we're gonna you know you know we need media space. We need housing for when people. I mean, we got people traveling in all the time. And you just think of that time when you know Dallin and DB come in. Jason's in all the time. So we're going to build a barn dominium basically that has housing offices, gym space, media facilities for us to do all our filming. in. Uh, Matt had a piece of property he bought for his forever home that he was going to build before he bought the home that he is in now um, that he's not going to, you know, use for anything. It's got an old historic barn on it, but we're going to build a building on that, on that piece of land. That's awesome. Yeah. It's not public, you know, I mean, I don't know that we won't do things occasionally where it's like, Hey, come on up. You know, if you want, we'll let 15 people come up for a couple of days and train just everyday people to, uh, you know, where I haven't thought that far ahead. By every day, a hundred thousand minimum Instagram followers, people, just so you know. <laughs> no, honestly, like it'd be great to have some people be able to experience it occasionally. It's just, it's truly going to be a training facility um, for, for, you know, athletes trying to, you know, go the pro route. And so it's, um, I don't know that that's not like, you know, I, I remember the person, I don't remember what podcast it was asked me about, you know, brick and mortar. And it's, you know, I think I said something on like, you know, not today. We'll see, you know, maybe, yeah. time. you know, it's, um, I'm not close to any of that stuff. I think, you know, I've been around enough of the, the, you know, I think Matt Fraser, HWPO training gym would be, you know, really attractive to people to go to, right? The gym business is not as, easy as people think think it no is. it's fucking hard uh, yeah it's almost i don't i don't know if this is true but like ryan fisher for example he has a gym i don't right. think uh, and it's crazy successful but i don't think he makes any money on it i think it's he makes his money because he has the ebooks and he has other things he's doing and that's basically a place for him to shoot his videos right. and and, and it, it's um it's part of the brand that right that chalk the chalk brand down in newport a lot of yeah just, I've, been, I've been there before yeah okay it's a cool, cool it's a cool Cool. You're good looking enough to get in that place. I know that place has a like, you know, how like some rides at amusement parks have a height. This has like an ugly stick. Like yeah. I could never get into that gym. A lot of pretty people there. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. <laughs> Ryan included. Yeah. They're, they're um, yeah. It's I don't know. Hot as fuck. We'll see what happens with that. Well, you know, we'll, we'll take a look at it. I'd love to be, you know, more present. We've, we've talked to some, you know, gym brands about being, you know, present with them as well, just to give access to people to be able to, you know, do functional fitness, CrossFit anywhere. Like I, my personal opinion and, you know, nobody was ever going to be able to convince me otherwise. is like, I have had a dream experience going through an affiliate door that I'm forever grateful for. And it's why I'm here today as I step through that door. It's a big barrier though. We know this, right? So it's like one of those things where if we can find ways, you know, we want to help this is like, you know, more people getting to experience things, you know, um, and soften the, the, you know, lower the bar, soften the barrier and experience CrossFit, people will gravitate to gyms. Uh, that's the answer for me. You know, I do understand that the CrossFit ethos has always, you know, had that, you know, it, everything is about the affiliate. And I believe that like the affiliate is, you know, what's changed all of our lives. I want more people to experience it. So the, the answer to me is like, the more you can democratize this, and that's not to say the business necessarily, but to get people to go through that door now, um, I think is experience based. It's just, you know, how do I get Peloton to stop having my wife do burpees, thrusters and bike and call it what they call it, call it CrossFit. Like you, that, that to me is like such a no brainer because that person's gonna be like, yeah, I fucking CrossFit. And then they're going to go to the affiliate. And if that's 10% more people that are yeah. saying I do CrossFit and now I'll go to an affiliate, who, guess who won the affiliate. Right. Right. So, um, yeah, we would, you know, we want, you know, us too like that, you know, I think it's, um, you know, we have a lot of things that make a lot of sense for people that aren't trying to, you know, do heavy barbell stuff and like be, you know, really gritty CrossFitters. You know, we have a sweat track and, 
you know, we want to, you know, find ways for more people to experience us, you know? So it's just, you know, we, you know, if that becomes brick and mortar, we'll see, but you know, if we can do work in, you know, in gyms in general, we'll do it. You know, we're just kind of open to grind and get out and about and be in front of people. It's, you know, what we're going to do with the games is just as much as we possibly can run class workouts, you know, whatever we can do, we just want people to uh, get fit, experience it. You know, we think we have a really cool formula for it and, um, it's not the only one. We know that that's cool. I mean, people can do other tracks and do main site and you got to find the right fit for you. We just want people to know actually what we do, you know, you, you manage, um, Matt Fraser. I do. Uh, Tia Toomey. No, I do not. Brooke Wells. Yes. Jason Hopper. Do. Yes. Um, Ellie Turner. We do. Yes. Um, uh, Catcher and David's daughter. We do. Uh, is there any anyone I forgot? Justin Medeiros. You do Justin too. Pat Vellner, Brad Fikowski, Cole Sager. Um, sure, I'll miss somebody in there, but yeah. Do Peyton. I ask you this every time you're on? I don't remember. Bailey oh, Rail. Good. Uh, good. Bailey Rail. She's awesome, by the way. Yeah. They're all. They all are. Oh, that's how she fucking got the noble shirt. I fucking knew it. No. I'm still studying this. I'm like, how the fuck did this chick get a shirt? I mean, she's great. Don't get me wrong. She's great. She's that was some home cooking. She's been there. No, she's been with them a while. All right. Oh, she has been? Oh, yeah. She's been. So her and Tyler okay. All right. were with them, honestly, since the beginning. Like, they, okay. they've been their legacy with those guys. They've been a long time. Okay. Uh, Brent, Fee, jo- I didn't know you, Justin Medeiros, too. Wow. Yep. Yeah, Dan- Daniel works really closely with him. Um, they have a- Daniel's moving to Boise, so Justin lives most of the year in Boise. So they're gonna. Be- he's building a house there to to be closer there. Wait, do- I-, I thought Justin was going to school there. He did, and he's owns a home there. So I think he'll you know always always spend a portion of his time there. And Daniel's building a house there as well. Wow, what a trip! I th- I figured he would come back to California or go to Washington. They love it out there. The two of them, like D- Daniel, is is getting married in September, and um, you know, so his fiance and, and Justin, like they they can't get enough. I get Boise is like um, Austin, Nashville. It's a little behind, but like there are a lot of young people moving to Boise. It's a cool town. Yeah, um, and and then you know where the old people are moving. In Boston, Coeur d'Alene. <laughs> The smart, the smart, the smart old people. I was just there. You were, and, oh, what were you doing up there? I was visiting. I was visiting uh, Katrin and Brooks. Oh, they're, they're up there? Uh, yeah, Brooks owns a house on, on the lake. Yeah, smart. Oh, yeah. Smart. It is, it is, uh, it is a piece of heaven. I, I, every, Matt and Sammy have been out there. I, I've been out a few t- couple times now. Cole lives like 40 minutes from there. And, it's the hardest place that I have leaving every time I go. It is, it's, it's, it's insane. You, you know, James uh, is is going between – James Fitzgerald is going – does Scottsdale in the winter and Coeur d'Alene in the summer. Is that where he lives? Yeah. that's sure. and, and another one of our good friends is doing that also. One of uh, one of our acquaintances. Oh, yeah? Who's that? Yeah. Uh, the um, What's his name? Uh, Mr. Glassman, Greg. Oh, did he, is he been on the lake? Yeah, it's uh, that'll, it's, that'll, it's that'll, something. It's it's good. It, it's gone it, bananas. Bob. What what'd you say? That lake has gone bananas. Yeah, it's it's really good uh, living, especially those people who figured out the Scottsdale thing because they never have to leave seventy five degrees ever. Yeah, I was there last week. It was like eighty eighty five. We played golf. You know, Brooks is a member at a golf club there. That's awesome. Called Gauzer Ranch, and we just. Uh, how cool he has a couple boats like it's just such a cool place you know wake you know, wake surfing boat fishing boat and oh did you try wake surfing i did my first time ever that how... is i was able to get up i mean it's um i'm having a little trouble getting i can get up but for some reason even though like i i have my left foot forward for some, I don't know what it is, but my body is like pulling me to the right. So I'm going the wrong way. So like I get up 
every time, but I can't get myself to the right side of the wake. <laughs> so, oh, oh it, it look, yeah, it looks like magic when you see people doing it. You're like, what the fuck is going? You it, people who don't it. know, people are. It's you're surfing behind a boat, but you don't have a rope. So ba it just looks like. I mean, you're surfing the wake of the boat, wakeboarding. Fascinating, and Brooks is insanely good at it. So he basically can surf up to the 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 deck on the back of the boat walk off his board then just jump back on the board doesn't even have to get pulled up wow he's really good at it you know who's good at it is katrin wow never, she had never done it before and then i we go up she's been up there for whatever since the last chance qualifier so she's been out there like a week and a half or so and i they threw her behind the boat and she's up surfing with no rope i was like what this is crazy super athlete that is athletic because I'll tell you, it's not that easy. People, well, I don't know if anybody would look at that and think it's easy, but like that is pretty hard. Speak, that, speaking of thick skin, Javier Acosta said, gave us the yawn emoji and said, move this along, Sevon. Hey, Javier. Well, guess what? <laughs> <laughs> um, have you seen these? Have you seen this? I have seen those. Yeah. yeah. The, the wad zombie. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen those. Who's that? Colton. Oh, nice. Who? So who has cards? Uh, um, the the four that I have, and they're they come so nice. Um, it's um Daniel Brandon, Colton Mertens, Patrick Vellner, and Jason Hopper. And the guy just said in the comments who makes these, he wants to send you some. Can I give him? Can will you send me an address? I can send to yeah. him. I love them. That's that'd be really cool. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll text you my address after this. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah. Sorry, Javier. We're just talking about some other stuff here. Yeah, Javier. Hey. Okay. So, when was the last time you were naked with your wife? Sorry, Javier. I get back on topic. Oh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> Javier, Javier, are you better now? Um. Yeah. Yeah. Now that's like once every six months. No. Oh yeah. <laughs> You're busy, ma'am. <laughs> yeah. Um. I, I think we're good. It's always good to catch. It's always good to catch up. It's been a while. I don't think I've talked to you face to face like this since Wadapalooza. Since my, I, you know, was like on site. We were talking every night after the event. So it's yeah, pretty, thank you for doing that. I really appreciate that. That was things cool. like that. It's things like that that have made this podcast successful and unique. Well, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna get off the air here, but don't um, hang up. Uh, there's been a response to my text. It's it's less than friendly <laughs> about requesting Josh and Matt to come on and I'll share and I'll share it with you. I'm not sharing it with you guys. And if you want to blame someone, blame Javier Acosta. That's why I'm not sharing my my text exchange with Mr. Matt Fraser and Josh Bridges. All right. Tomorrow morning I have Matt Torres on. And then I have who else do I have on? And then I have on um let me see. I think it's Adrian Bosman comes on after the Matt Torres at 7, Adrian Bosman at 7.45, Haley Adams at 6.30, and I suspect there will be someone else on at 7.15. We got shit to do. Uh, thanks, everyone, for checking in. Love you guys. Big show.